Hey there, welcome to the UXF channel and welcome to this tutorial for the ukulele playlongs of Morgan Wallen's Silverado for Sale. This was a request on the ukulele playlongs Facebook group from a music educator. I always try to give music educators uh, sort of first dibs on any requests because that's really the heart of my channel and my work is to help educators create content that is meaningful for students. And this is undoubtedly country music. So it is not going to appeal to all people. I get that. But at the same time, there are parts of the United States where this is the music of choice. And unfortunately, there are a number of Morgan Wallen songs that don't fit in a school environment. This one is just fine for your school. And perhaps if your school doesn't listen to country music, you may also want to do it because it is a standard four chord song. So uh, with that said, what this video is going to do is we'll go over the chords you need for GCEA soprano concert or tenor ukulele. Then we'll take a look at the chords you need for baritone DGB ukulele. And then I'll give you one strumming idea. And we'll talk about strumming when we get there. If you want to support the work on this channel, there are three things you can do. First of all, you can like the video. Second, you can subscribe to the channel. And third, you can always buy me a cup of coffee to say thank you for making this content at buymeacoffee.com slash ukestuff. Now, let's begin with the chords you need for GCEA, soprano, concert, or tenor ukulele. It's a four chord song. So you've got the C chord. You've got the F chord. You've got the A minor chord and then the G chord. Now, as a teacher, a lot of students struggle with the G chord. But in that, I teach the G chord third in my process. It is the second most used chord on ukulele. We've studied the number of chords that have been used. Both myself and the Ukulele Hunt channel has done so, and G is the second most used chord on both of our works. Now, it would make sense that it would be more commonly used on an educational specific channel, but the Ukulele Hunt website is not education specific. So that tells you something. So it is worth learning. It's worth going the pain to learn it and making it happen. Um, again, one of the couple of the tricks that I use is I tell my students to plant those first two fingers first and then add the third finger. Remember that the uh, finger is pointing towards you. And then also not to try to make the G chord straight across, but to come at it from an angle. That helps a lot, having the freedom to move your hand. And make sure that your students aren't, or that you aren't either way, uh, trying to play chords while supporting your ukulele with a bent wrist up there. A lot of people do that. Um, your ukulele is better off with you kind of wedging it in your arm and allowing this to stay as straight as possible, even if you rotate your wrist a little bit to make that happen. All right, those are the four chords you need to play Silverado for Sale on GCEA Soprano Concert or Tenor Ukulele. Now let's take a look at Baritone DGB Ukulele. For baritone ukulele, I'll be using this instrument. This is my Tom concert ukulele with baritone Pepe Romero baby baritone strings on it so I can tune it like a baritone. Now, I did choose to leave this song in its original key. Yes, that means you have to play an F chord. So you've got your C chord, and then you'll have to play an F chord. Now, bar chords. First of all, they're easier to learn farther up the fretboard. With my own students, we actually start eventually, like fifth, sixth class, doing a warm-up where we practice going up and down the fretboard with a bar chord, not just like that, but also with their thumb, because it's easier to bar at the fifth fret, but unfortunately you have to be at the first fret. So with your first finger, pull against the fretboard while holding your ukulele securely with the other arm, pull against strings one and two. That should give you most of a clear sound. I'm actually pulling against the fretboard as if I were going to launch something off of it, and then support with your thumb. It is not pinching, it's pulling. It's very, very important, because then it makes the bar chord that much easier, and then you add two fingers to it. There's your F chord. Then you have an A minor chord, and then a G chord. But that F chord is used a lot, so if you're trying to learn how to play the C chord, so the F chord, it's gonna be a great one to practice. So 
sort of thing. So C, F, A minor, G. Now let's talk about strumming. All right, as we begin talking about strumming, first and foremost, there was no ukulele used in the original song. And quite honestly, being country music, there's probably never going to be any ukulele originally used in the original song. And that's okay. This is a play along. Every now and then I get a comment from someone that's like, there was no ukulele there. Yeah, that's why it's called a play along. So you can play along with a song that you like. It doesn't have to have ukulele in it. That said, you're not going to match what the guitar does. You're just not. So you have to find something that works. If you don't like my suggestion, go ahead and find something else that works for you. Here are the three rules. Number one, play the right chord. Number two, keep the right tempo with the recording. And number three, make sure that your strumming pattern fits with the style of the song. So for example, a reggae beat here playing beat two, beat four, beat two, beat four, probably is not gonna work very well. But so many things could work, even just simple down strums, whatever works for you. Now. This is what I found works for me for pretty much the whole song, is going like this. Down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up. So yes, this is a two measure strumming pattern. And if you notice, my hand never stops moving. I could if I wanted to, but People that freeze end up causing problems and they end up with this weird jerky motion. Strumming should be right here where the body meets the neck most of the time. There may be times that you want to play elsewhere for a different tone, but generally for most of us, we want to get the best tone we can, which is right there where the body meets the neck. If you see people with wear on their ukuleles here, it means they're strumming in the wrong spot, generally on their instrument, treating it like a guitar. And you might say, well, why don't we strum the same place in guitar? Look at the size of the guitar. Look where the sound hole is in, you know, sort of relation to the nut and the saddle on the guitar. Uh, chances are that guitar sound hole is almost in the middle of the guitar or very close to it, whereas that is not the case with an ukulele. In fact, the 12th fret is the middle point on your instrument. So when you're there, you're actually playing a little bit off of center if you think about it. So anyway, you're going to be going down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down. Up. So let's just go down, up, down, up, two, ready, go. Down, up, down. Again, two, ready, go. Down, up, down, up. Now we're gonna add a little more. We're gonna go down, up, down, up, up. One, two, ready, go. Down, up, down, up, up. Again, two, three, four. Down, up, down, up, up. Now I'm gonna take a little break here and just tell you when I'm dealing with my own students and we're playing along with the, the play along videos, I do not tell them very often a very specific pattern to strum. I just tell them the three rules. Make sure it's the right chord, make sure you're playing in tempo and that what you're doing fits with the music and then I don't have any preference beyond that. There are very few cases where the strum has to be right on a play along. You know what I'm saying? So keep that in mind. If this doesn't work for you, do something else. So, so far we've gone down, up, down, up, up. Now we're gonna do one more up. Down, up, down, up, up, up. Down, up, down, up, up, up. And then we're gonna finish it off. Down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up. Now let's do it with some chord changes. One. Two, one, two, C, go. To F. Back to C. All right. Down, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up. Now, is that the only pattern you can do? No. Is it a pattern that works for the whole song? Yes. So if you're looking for a pattern to play Silverado for sale by Morgan Wallen, that will work for you. All right. Thanks so much for joining me for this video. I hope you're having a great day and I'll be back soon with some more Uke stuff for you.